in the second algebra video, we're not going to just be able to solve for x as we did in the previous examples. In this one, we're going to have to do a series of substitutions or, you know, maybe one substitution or two or however many substitutions for a number for a variable. And we're going to get the information we need from the problem. So let's look at some examples. The first comes from 2005 test section two, number three. If r equals 2t and t equals 3, what is the value of 2r? So notice we're going to have to do some substitutions here, right? Or one substitution. We're going to have to go ahead and plug t is 3 into this equation, and that will give us the value of r, but then we need to give them 2r. So let's go ahead and circle that so we don't forget. So let's go ahead and do this. So t is 3 into this, so r equals 2t. So r equals 2 times 3 which is 6. So if r equals 6, then 2r, again, kind of another substitution, is going to have to go in here, so it's 2 times 6, which is just 12, which will give us choice E. Let's look at another example. If k and m are defined by the equations above, what is the value of m when w equals 4 and x equals 1? Again, we're given values for these variables, so let's go ahead and plug them in, and we eventually want to get to m. So let's see what we do. So we have k is equal to 3wx, and we have m is equal to w minus 1 times k. So let's go ahead and plug in. We have w and we have x. So k then is going to equal 3 times 4 times 1, right? Getting this information here, just replacing it. So this is going to equal 12. So now we have a value for 12, or for k, it's 12. So we know that m is going to equal 4 minus 1 times 12, which is 3 times 12 which is 36. And again, this is going to be choice E. Next one from 2009, 2010, section six. If k plus x plus k equals 12 and p times x plus k is 36, what is the value of p? Well, again, kind of like the t plus u problem we saw in the last video, we're given a value for a sum, and then we want to know p times that sum is 36. So let's go ahead and substitute 12 in for the sum into the equation. So we're going to get p times x plus k is equal to 36. So we know x plus k is 12, so we're going to just swap in 12 for that. So we get 12p equals 36, divide both sides by 12. We get p is equal to 3, which is choice A. A little harder one. If h and k are positive numbers and h plus k equals 7, then 7 minus k over h equals... Okay, so we look at this one, and unlike the last ones, there's no h plus k in here, right? We have 7 minus k over h. And now we're like, well, what do we do, right? I don't have an h, I don't have a k, I don't have anything. Well, let's see what happens. Um, let's take this guy and let's modify him so we can make a substitution into here. So there's multiple ways we can do this. I mean, one way is let's just solve it for um, h. So I have h plus k is equal to 7. I'll subtract k from both sides. I'll get h equals 7 minus k. And now I have a value for h, so I'm going to plug this in to the equation. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get 7 minus k over h. That's the same thing as 7 minus k over, we're going to substitute 7 minus k in for h, 7 minus k, and what do you know? That equals 1. So it's choice A. Uh, notice as well, we could also have seen um, the top. 7 minus k is here. We knew that h equals 7 minus k, so we alternately could have just said, well, this top thing is h, and the bottom is say h, so again, it's 1. And you could have done a lot of different substitutions. You could have solved for k, and then put it in for h. You could have done a lot of things. But the point is, we want to rearrange what we're given and make a substitution based off of that. So it's not like we did in the last problems where we just took it and popped it in. We have to do a little work on the substitution piece in order to get it to work here. But once we do, it just all falls out. Now we're going to do a grid in problem. Notice we've got no multiple choice, but that's okay. We're just going to solve it as we know how and get an answer for it. If j over k, oh, sorry, let me just, this comes from 2012, 2013, uh, number six, uh, section six, number 12. If j over k equals 32 and k equals three halves, what is the value of one half j? Let's be careful there because we want to give them one half j, not j. So we're told j over k is 32. And then we're told k is 3 halves, so let's go ahead and substitute that in. So we're going to get j over 3 halves equals 32. Now we have to be careful here. How are we going to solve for j? Well, we can't, for instance, divide both sides by 3 halves or anything like that because this is on the bottom already. So the easiest thing to do, I think, is just put this over 1 and then cross multiply. So j times 1 is just j. 
And 32 times 3 halves will give us 48. So we know j is 48, but remember we want 1 half j. So 1 half of 48 should give us 24, uh, which is the answer to this question. So notice on some SAT problems, we have to do a substitution. We have to either plug in a value for a variable that's given in the problem, or as we saw in this number six, do a little rearranging in order to make the substitution work. Uh, but that's an, we'll see some examples later actually of some more substitutions, especially when it comes to uh, two equations and two unknowns maybe. Uh, but this should cover you for most of the things you'll see on the SAT in, in this topic.